So, good morning everyone. Welcome back. Next day, the electrician has just arrived. And as you could see, maybe in the VRM, we are down. Let me show you. That was last night. Yeah, all the warnings coming through because we are down to 4% state of charge now. Yeah, and the pool pump is running 288 watts and we are charging with only 100 watts at the moment. Should I be concerned about this? No, not at all. This is probably the lowest I would go. 48.5 volts, so this is just above 3.1 volts per cell. Still totally fine. It doesn't stress the battery at all. This is all good. But I'll turn off the pool pump now and wait for the battery to recharge a bit. So hopefully we get one string connected today and have a bit more power from tomorrow morning then. But for now, everything seems to be fine. So you can actually use the battery down to 4%, no problem. There we go, this is day number two. Three vehicles here, lots of people working on the roof. Fantastic. Look at this weather. Huh? And only these used panels up here. They produce like 650 watts or something. Battery is still down to 6%. Oh, that is new. It comes from there somewhere. And the boss is coming, right when the lunch is ready. Yeah, he can smell that. He can smell it. Good delivery. Oh, excellent. Oh, the panel's going up, panel's going up. Hey, Chris, was this your vodka? You left in my garage last night? Oh, that'll be um, Ethan's probably. Ethan's? Oh, one of those boys here. Right. <laughs> you don't drink vodka, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, put it in the fridge. It's ice cold now. No. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We one, two, three, four, five. Another five up here, and then each two are one string. And look at this. We've got some space. All around. Apparently we are plugged in. Yep. Just polarity and voltage is good up there. So I just Ready? do I need to check it? That's string 92. five. Ninety-two. Yeah, string nice. string four. String three. Okay, here comes the big moment. Chris is checking in all the fuses. So second from the left. Should be your solar voltage incoming. Yep, perfect. Two there. Polarity Four. is correct. Correct. Yep. Okay, so if you turn this one on, we should see voltage here on the on the app. There you go. 80 volts. 89. Awesome. May. There we go. Charging. Yeah. Yeah. You got power. 
Yeah, but only 500 watts. Supposed to be 4,000. <laughs> What's going on? We had the 40 watt panels. Yeah. <laughs> Do I say 400? <laughs> 40 watt. Times 10. Watt. Yeah, times yeah. 10 makes 500. That's good yeah. then. That's very good. <laughs> so, 4 o'clock. They are knocking off now. That makes a terrible noise when it backs up. All right, that's it. They're back next week. <sighs> okay, let's have a closer look at the damage. Once again, we are on the roof. <laughs> okay, let's do a bit of an inspection here and see what the electrician has done today. So here, for example, here with this um, 10 degree angle situation here, um, the electrician was a bit concerned about the uh, potential shading of these panels through these ones that's why I have put this conduit here this is roughly the length of the solar panel which will be installed in this location and now if you look over this corner there once they are touching the other solar panels there see like this this gives us the angle of the Sun so it will be fairly down already and I told him I'm not too concerned about summertime because then we will have enough power anyway. It's more about the power we are getting in winter time. So a bit steeper pointing to the west and we get this nice window here in winter time then which shines here on the west roof. Even if we have a bit of shading on these ones here, but I doubt we will. If this is the case though, I can always come along and lower these supports here a bit. Just, just to find the optimal angle then, but we need to wait for winter time for this to happen. So now in summertime it's not a problem because the sun goes down over there somewhere behind the tree anyway and there will be shading here on all panels so it doesn't really matter. So here's our new west roof, very happy with that. It's all connected, all mounted, all working. And we can see here these clamps they have used. They have actually the ground washer already included. So yeah, there you can see the ground washer is between the panel and the aluminium rail. Exactly there. And this is how these clamps look like. See these earth washers down here, they are already included. And they just slide into the rail and then you're done. And only these rails with the earth watchers are connected to ground. So this one is not connected to ground. This one is again. This is not. This one is. This one is not. And also these ground clamps, they have also the earth washer. So when you slide them into the rail, like this, and tighten them, they will pierce through the anodized aluminium here and give you good contact and the cable clamps into this part then. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and then have used basically this um, spray, what I've told you before, to um, prevent oxidation of the copper. But I'm not sure how good this actually is, how good this works over time. Because the copper is still visible there. Or is it more to give? I don't know. I'm not a big fan of this spray stuff here. But obviously this is part of the regulation and this is what everyone does. It's quick. But is it good? <laughs> I would say it's not good. I like the silicon part far better. Yeah, and then we have these things here, these, um, what do you want to call it, roof clamps. I think they are called roof flashing or so. I've got one here. This is basically a PDM rubber, UV stabilized rubber with an aluminum frame and you can just bend them in all form so they're actually molding to your yeah, to, to the shape of your roof and then you screw them in have some silicon underneath and then they put some silicon around here yeah, like here you can see the silicon everywhere they didn't muck around here but these were my holes I drilled into the roof so they have actually put this, um, this flashing on top of it now and they have actually used now my holes in the roof here for their cables. Oh, I just realized they left this rail here longer on this side to support the conduit here up to where the cables go inside the roof. That's pretty clever. I would have cut them all the same length maybe and then thought about this situation later. 
and then I had to build something. <laughs> but yeah, that makes perfect sense. And this pipe here is the ground or earth, which comes from this main earth clamp there. So let's start. Let's start from down here. What they have actually done is they have used my existing six millimeter earth cable, which came out here, and another flashing and lots of silicon goes over here and then clamps onto the rail. See, there's my six millimeter cable, and then they use their own four millimeter cable. And this is where all the earth cables come together here. And from there, one goes all the way through this conduit on the other side. And in my design, I had a ground cable for each side of the roof. But it seems like you can just daisy chain them together. So, so overall, looking at this installation they have done today here, I must say we have not done a bad job at all with our solar installation here and the rails and the earthing and the cable runs. There's not too much difference to the professional installation here, I must say. So we have done a very good job. Okay, I didn't use any of these ones here, but I'll, I'll put these ones on my website here. If you want to go this way, um, there's a link on my website and under the video as well. Let's see what we get. It is super, super cloudy. Is the sun coming out there in the blue? No, it's not. It's this big cloud going in front of the sun because I'm doing solar panel testing here. Oh, still 600 watts almost. Wow, that is that is pretty good from these panels here. So 600 watts, if we take this times four, we've got one, two, three, and the big shed four. So six times four is 2.2.4 kilowatts, say two kilowatts we would get in this cloudy condition here. That would be amazing. If we still charge with two kilowatts in these conditions then, wow this this is all i need and then when the sun comes out boom they have used the original extenders here while well, i have just whacked in a piece of aluminium into the rails to extend them it worked the same way ah here yeah, plastic end caps see i didn't have that huh there's all these little details you need to discover and learn from them also this gap around each of the panels they are not close together as you would expect there's a gap in between here and they have they have used one of these clamps just to put this in between as a spacer until everything was um, screwed down and, and then they removed them again ah yeah the disconnection points so on each corner of the solar panels at the top this is over there this is over here over there and so on you can just grab in here and you have the two mc4 connectors here and this is the cable which actually goes down to our combiner box but you can manually disconnect um, this string here completely on the roof now and this is part of the new regulation to replace these awful terrible stupid disconnection boxes we had on the roofs here for solar systems so this needs to be easy accessible and this is just sitting underneath the solar panel here and I think there goes a label or something or a dot or whatever I don't know yet how this will be labeled or something here I mean think about it the building is on fire and nobody goes on the roof to disconnect a string or something you know because your solar panel burns or whatever that is just totally stupid this is just for me if we do any maintenance or something we can disconnect the whole string here on the roof easily and then we can safely work inside the garage with replacing the combiner box or whatever we need to do then and this is this is something my solar installation didn't have so if you build your own make sure you've got this disconnection point here accessible on each of your solar strings regulations so on the next step they will mount install and connect the east roof here as well they've got all the rails ready on the big shed they've got the tilt mount ready I would guess they need another one and a half days to get this all installed, mounted and finalized. Finally, we have the first roof installed and connected. We are charging. I mean, not that we have much sun this afternoon, but we will see tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the first full day with a new west roof connected. And I guess we may have some pure sunshine in the morning until noon and then the clouds come in again like today, like the day before, like the rest of the week. But it may give us a good idea how much we can expect from these panels here.
Okay, guys, I would say so far this video from today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing and great support here on the channel. Thank you for all your generous donations. Keeps me going and the video is coming. And until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.